My name is Mark Espeland. I'm a professor of gerontology and biostatistics at the Wake Forest University School of Medicine in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I'm here to talk about the association that obesity and diabetes have with the risk of dementia. There's a few points I'd like to address and questions to answer. Are obesity and diabetes risk factors for cognitive decline and impairment? Can obesity and diabetes be prevented? And will this reduce risks for future cognitive decline and impairment? And does treating obesity and diabetes reduce risks? I'll cover these points and then end with a summary of the overall strength of evidence. Midlife obesity is associated with concurrent relative deficits in cognitive function. It's also associated with increased rates of cognitive decline and increased risks of dementia by 50 to up to 100%. There's a phenomenon known as the obesity paradox, where in some settings it appears that being overweight or slightly obese later in life is actually protective against some diseases. This is difficult, however, to parse out because those that are obese and live to later in life perhaps some, have some particular resilience against some of the age-related chronic diseases and thus are less likely to develop dementia. There's also a phenomenon that weight loss is associated later in life with impending frailty and individuals that develop Alzheimer's disease typically lose some weight during the course of this development. Now, how does obesity increase risks? Well, in part, this is due to inflammation throughout the body. Obesity also conveys risks for comorbidities to dementia, including hypertension, insulin resistance, and high cholesterol. Obesity also accelerates biological aging in the body, so the individual can be, from their body's perspective, older than they might appear in calendar years. It also disrupts energy metabolism uh, throughout the body, and in particular in the brain. We're talking about type 2 diabetes, which is also sometimes known as adult onset diabetes, and how it increases the risk for cognitive decline and dementia. It's associated with clear deficits in cognitive function. It increases the risk for dementia, both Alzheimer's disease and vascular disease, by 50 to 100 percent. It also increases the risk of cerebrovascular disease, strokes, and atrophy, which is the loss of brain tissue. And these risks may begin during prediabetes, before frank diabetes has developed in the individual. Now, how does diabetes increase risk for cognitive decline? Part of this is through brain insulin resistance. Glucose is the major food for the brain, and diabetes disrupts the metabolism of glucose in the brain, so the brain resultingly gets less energy than it requires. Diabetes is also associated with comorbidities that are associated with, with dementia, such as hypertension, obesity, and high cholesterol. Diabetes disrupts vascular processes in the body. So how do we prevent obesity? Well, the primary pathway is through eating fewer calories, increasing one's physical activity. It's also to promote prenatal and postnatal care. Mothers that develop gestational diabetes during the birth are more likely to have children that later on become obese. It's important to have parenting counseling so that good choices are made during a children's life that might be carried forward long term. And there's school-based approaches based on nurse and improved snacking and lunching within the schools. And it's often effective at removing vending machines or taking out sweetened beverages from these machines in schools. So who should be targeted for obesity prevention? Well, clearly children. We want to establish good choices in their life that are carried forward. Young and midlife adults are very important as well, too. It's early adulthood where most cases of obesity begin. And certainly targeting at-risk communities is important. Now, can diabetes be prevented? And yes, it can. This graph is from the Finnish Diabetes Prevention Study. And what it shows are two curves. The red line are individuals that were given tools to decrease their caloric intake, increase their physical activity, and monitor their risk factors. Individuals in the blue line were given information about these, but not tools to make these changes. 
And what's plotted is the incidence of diabetes over time. And you can see that those that were given the tools to make the lifestyle changes over time had 50% fewer cases of diabetes. This study was done in Finland. It was also replicated in the United States with the Diabetes Prevention Program. In this clinical trial, there were three different interventions that were compared. One was based on lifestyle changes, similar to the Finnish study. The second was based on using a drug called metformin, which is known to prevent diabetes, and a control group. And we see during the course of the trial, over 2.8 years, the lifestyle intervention was most successful in preventing diabetes, prevented over half the cases that were seen in the control group. And then long term, across up to 10 years, the lifestyle intervention was associated with a 34% reduction um, in diabetes compared with the control. So what are the strategies to reduce the risk of diabetes? Well, most importantly are our lifestyle interventions, as you just saw, focused on weight loss and increased physical activity. Medications such as Foreman convey some risks, but are also effective in preventing diabetes. There's a lot of information that is developed by the CDC in the National Diabetes Prevention Program, which can be found online, uh, searching through the CDC documentations. And this gives tools besides weight loss and metformin that can be used to prevent diabetes. So who should be targeted for diabetes prevention? Well, clearly individuals with prediabetes, and these can be identified through screening programs focused on measuring glucose in the blood. Individuals with overweight or obesity are very important targets. And of course, at-risk communities should be targeted as well. This is a slide that's based on a study performed in individuals with obesity or overweight who also had type 2 diabetes. It was called the Action for Health and Diabetes, the Look Ahead Clinical Trial. The dashed line on the bottom are individuals that underwent a lifestyle intervention targeting weight loss, increasing physical activity, monitoring risk factors, much like the Diabetes Prevention Program in the Finnish study. The dark line on top are individuals that were given some education, but not the tools to make these changes. And what you can see is that individuals that received the lifestyle intervention immediately were able to lose about 8% of their body weight. And they regained some over the course of the next years, but even through 15 years of follow-up, they maintained lower weights than those that were in the comparison group. Now notice both groups eventually were losing weight. And some of this is, is good, it's losing fat. But also as we age, we also lose muscle and we lose bone. And some of those weight loss later on um, isn't necessarily good for the individual. Did treating obesity within the look-ahead cohort reduce the risk of dementia? Well, here are two curves. On the left are individuals with cognitive impairment, and as it developed over time, based on their age. And on the right are individuals that develop dementia over time, based on their age. And you can see it's what we expected, that the increases in cognitive impairment and dementia occur exponentially with age. This is to be expected. What was disappointing, though, was that treating the obesity in these individuals with diabetes had no impact on the overall incidence of mild cognitive impairment or, or dementia. So diabetes treatment to reduce risk, the strategies might be diabetes control through lifestyle intervention or, or through using diabetes drugs to control blood glucose. Now do these reduce the risk for cognitive decline and cognitive impairment? These are some data from the Accord Mine, a large clinical trial that was done on individuals with type 2 diabetes, and it focused on controlling their diabetes using drugs. There were two different groups within the trials, those that had a conventional approach to controlling diabetes with drugs, and those that had a more aggressive approach using more drugs to push diabetes control down to even greater limits. And what was found there, as portrayed in these slides, is that this had no impact on cognitive decline. So treating diabetes in this cohort with intensive pharmacological therapy did not affect cognitive decline. But there's some evidence that some individuals may benefit from diabetes control. This is a slide, again, from the look-ahead cohort. And there's two different lines. The first line, the dark line, are individuals that were overweight but didn't have obesity. Their weight, although it was greater than 
what we would like to have, it wasn't at the level that met the definition of diabetes. The dash line are individuals that had obesity. And what you can see, those who had overweight but not obesity that were able to control their diabetes had better cognitive functioning than those that were not able to control it. The control of diabetes within those that were obese was ineffective in changing cognitive function. So it may be that there are just some people that benefit from control of diabetes, but not everybody with respect to improving their cognitive function. So who should be targeted for diabetes? Well, there's some evidence that those with shorter durations of diabetes, those that are less heavy as we just saw, and those that are candidates for lifestyle intervention, good candidates, those are the ones that should be targeted uh, for strategies to control diabetes. There's compelling evidence that midlife obesity and type 2 diabetes increase risks for cognitive deficits, they accelerate cognitive decline, and induce cognitive impairment. And diabetes, fortunately, is preventable through lifestyle intervention. There's less compelling evidence, however, that treating obesity and diabetes reduce risks for cognitive decline and impairment. So in summary, prevention of diabetes and obesity should be encouraged to preserve brain health. Important targets include children, young and middle-aged adults, and at-risk communities. And we feel like it's likely more effective, it's in the context of a multi-domain approach that features weight loss, physical activity, risk factor monitoring, and improved nutrition. The treatment of diabetes and obesity may have a variable impact on the risk of cognitive decline and impairment. It's likely more effective for individuals who are relatively healthier and less heavy, and if it's administered during midlife. And it may be more effective if it involved a multi-domain approach, again, including reducing caloric intake and increasing physical activity. I want to thank you for your attention, and I appreciate this opportunity.